So Jesus is our good shepherd. He loves us. He protects us. He provides for us. He pursues us when we're lost. He saves us. And we are his flock together. We learn to listen to his voice, and then we follow him together. The power of this picture comes back to the need for a sheep to have protection. They have no way to protect themselves. In fact, we could laugh a lot about just how defenseless a sheep is. There's a reason for it being an image for the people of God. We need help, right? And uh, God in his wisdom used this picture to portray spiritual leadership. So uh, the way that a flock would work is if a flock got to be a certain size, there were too many sheep for one shepherd to care for. And so what was known as the chief shepherd would then appoint under shepherds over portions of the flock. So those portions of the flock could get the care, the protection, the oversight that they needed. And God uses this picture for spiritual leadership. Jesus is the chief shepherd, but he appoints under him, under shepherds, over each flock, each portion of his flock. And we are part of that flock. And so uh, within each local church, as the gospel was spreading and churches were starting, over each local church, which we are, God would appoint under shepherds for those people. People who had the character that God desired, who would stand in the place that God appointed to care for, shepherd, and lead those people. And so I bring this up because that's the model that Bridgepoint puts in place. We have a shepherd team, a team of shepherds, uh, maybe in another place you've heard them called elders. Um, and, And that team stands over the flock while they stand under Jesus um, to provide the care and the protection, the guidance that uh, the local flock needs in order to thrive. And so um, today I bring this up because this is a transition Sunday for, uh, for Bridgepoint shepherd team. Uh, We have some shepherds who've served and completed their term, and they are stepping down and passing the baton. And then we have a couple new shepherds that are stepping onto the team to carry the work forward. And so I want to first invite those who have been serving as shepherds over Bridgepoint. Okay, so about five years ago, Bridgepoint appointed shepherds for the very first time. This was a significant moment in the life of the church because um, in just a couple months, we're going to celebrate our 10th birthday. It'll be fun. Um, When we appointed shepherds, we transitioned from external leaders, people from other churches who were caring for uh, and overseeing the flock, to being a church that could stand on its own. They had leaders to care for it. And so several of the guys up here with me right now were part of that original shepherd team. They've served faithfully for over five years now. Uh, They have helped to protect the church, to make sure that the church was peaceful, to ensure that all who are part of it had what they needed to flourish spiritually. And uh, maybe you guys have noticed that the last few years have not been easy, right? But if you look around, like Bridgepoint has flourished. We've been under good care. And it is in part because of the shepherds that God has set in place to guide and direct and protect. And so at this point, as uh, Charles, Steve, and Chris are passing the baton. They've completed their terms. They are passing the baton and stepping down from this team. I feel immensely grateful for the leadership God has provided for this church. And so as their last act as shepherds, uh, Chris is going to speak a word of blessing and prayer over Bridgepoint. Steve's going to read a passage that represents the passing of the baton uh, to new people who will step into this role. And so I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Right on. Man, the last few years, Bridgepoint, have been a wild ride, haven't they? (laughs) Um, But we have had an incredible joy together uh, to to care and to love and to pray with you. And I want to pray the same thing that Jesus prayed the night before he was crucified, Mm -hmm. which is ultimately for our unity. Because if one thing is going to rip us apart... Is, is that, is Satan coming in and, and disunifying us. In the last five years, it's been wild, but at the same time, uh, it's been a lot of fun because of you, because of what God's doing in you, because we've decided to anchor into Jesus and Jesus alone. And so we know that that fun is spiritual, yeah. and we've had a lot of fun together, and there's a lot of fun to be had as well. Um, and so let me pray uh, with all of us in unity for our unity together. Amen. Heavenly Father, Wow, it has been so 
good, not because of what we have done, but what you have done in, among, and through us. Jesus, you are the anchor that holds all things together now and throughout eternity. So, Father, as we pass this baton to another set of an amazing men, Father, it's not about us. It's about you working yeah. in, through, and among us. And so, yeah. Father, I thank you for this church deciding to anchor into Jesus and Jesus alone. I pray for the, the men that, that will be leading and caring and serving and sacrificing uh, for all of us, me included. And, Father, I pray that, that their wisdom, their counsel, their love is known throughout. So, Father, I just pray that our unity remains intact so we can be salt and light to the rest of the world. Yes, God. Father, thank you for Jesus. He is holding all things together. Amen. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody say that some leaders think of leadership as a sprint. Good leaders think of leadership as a marathon, but great leaders think of leadership as a relay race. It's all about who we are passing the baton to next. And so for the last six months, this team has been really praying diligently, discerning, discussing uh, who might be the right people to receive the baton on the other side of this passing. And, uh, and so we have identified a couple men, uh, Mark Medeiros and um, Dave Halligan, who will be coming up here in just a moment. Um, as God was outlining this model for leadership, he did not give really specific details about what we would do, but he did give a great description of who we should be. And I've asked Steve to read this from Titus chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Um, from Titus, there's pretty tough, pretty tough guidelines here. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. Amen. No one wants to have their character on full display, especially held to a standard that high, right? So it is a, a humbling thing to read the description of the character God desires for leaders in his church. It's kind of a terrifying thing. But what we've said is that we understand that no one is going to be per perfect in their character but we all want to be pursuing the kind of character that God desires from us. And what I can say is that the, the men on this stage have been God, men of noble character, and they have loved this church well. And so as we transition to begin welcoming new people onto the team, would you just join me in expressing gratitude for these men who have led well over the years? Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I love you. You too. So now I would like to welcome uh, Mark and Elliot Medeiros and Dave and Pam Halligan to the stage. Um, as they make their way up, we have, uh, we have been praying for months that God would provide the, the people to lead moving forward, uh, knowing that the passing of the baton was coming. And, um, and I love these people. Uh, you may recognize um, Mark and Ellie and their family from the uh, the kids' classrooms, they've served faithfully there for years. Dave and Pam uh, have served with prayer and in other ways, hosting a small group. And um, so what I've asked them to do, I could speak for a long time about how I love them and how I've seen them love God's people, the church. But I've asked them just to share a little bit about what this, uh, this role means to them. So we'll start with Mark. Morning, everyone. As Javis said, my name is Mark. And this is my beautiful wife, Ellie. And... Both of us have been Christians for over 27 years. When we were young Christians, like many of you are today, God truly really blessed us as we were able to experience the incredible beauty of a church family. People who truly loved the Lord and loved one another. A church family who loved to gather together to 
to study the word of God, to pray together for each other, and to be there for one another in the good times and the bad times of life. This incredible beauty of a church family is what we experience here today, the praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet something happened to Ellie and I which we were never expected when we were young believers. The church family <clears throat> that we were going to got tainted. The beauty of the church got tainted. What happened was pride and divisiveness snuck into the church. And as that continued to increase, the love of God and the love for one another decreased. It happened very slowly, because that's how Satan works. But ultimately, many people got hurt. People left the church family. Some of those people have never come to another church family since then. And for them, that's over 20 years. It breaks my heart. It's a tragedy. And I share this with you because even in this tragedy, God's faithful. Amen. And we can learn from these tragedies. God revealed to me the importance of protecting the beauty of God's church's family. Amen. See, when we protect God's family, we glorify the Lord. We bless each other mm -hmm. as family members. And we become a beacon of light to this dark world. Yeah. It's so crucial. This is why I'm so thankful to the shepherds that have protected the beauty of this church to date. Let us never take that for granted. And let us always be thankful for them. As Dave and I become shepherds today, we will partner with Mike and Jared to love this church family and to do our best to protect it, Amen. to protect the beauty of this family, because it's beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. But we can't do it alone. The beauty of this church requires all of us to do our portion. And how do we do our portion? by loving the Lord and loving one another. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Good morning, family. Um, you'll forgive me if I refer to some notes. You see, you don't really choose to be an elder or a pastor or a shepherd. Um, it is something that comes to you when you start to pursue God. He pursues you. So Pam and I are just responding to a love and a grace that is so amazing that we just have to follow it. It's a, it's a call, yes, but it's no different than the call that each one of you felt the day you realized that Jesus Christ was your Lord and Savior. As Keith said, we all hear it. Pam and I come to Bridgepoint from a small, very small church in Providence that we helped plant maybe 18 years ago. We knew everybody by name, and for somebody with my attention span, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> it has to be a small group, it's very small. So that's why this is a little bit intimidating. This is a very large, but very vibrant and wonderful group of believers in Jesus Christ. Our flock consisted largely of overcomers and addicts recovering. But what we learned there, what we learned from them, was that despite their failures, despite our, despite our failures, their faith was stronger than their failures. So if we only seek God's face on behalf of you, 
with you, for you, through you, then all else will be added. Thank you. Thanks. I pray that we will serve you. That's all we need to do, serve each other. Yeah. We'll try. Amen. With Amen. God's grace. If being on stage a lot was part of the agreement, they never would have said yes. <laughs> But because the primary thing in the, uh, the role and the responsibility is to love the people of God, they said yes, because they love you all very much. Uh, Mark and Dave are here with their wives today because, first of all, they don't want to do it without them. And secondly, because they can't. Ellie and Pam, you are a huge part of this. You care well for the flock. You are people of high character. And so we are honored to have you alongside your husbands, serving the church well. I have a set of questions to ask uh, Mike and Dave. They will respond uh, really on behalf of their families. Mark and Dave, sorry, you're Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Mike can correct me because he was supposed to read these questions and before the service he said, I don't want to. <laughs> sorry. So to Mark and Dave. On behalf of your family, I'm going to ask you these questions. You just respond with the affirmative to, re to accept the responsibility that God is entrusting to you. Mark and Dave, do you recognize that Jesus is the chief shepherd of this church and he bought this church with his blood? Therefore, do you surrender your will to his on behalf of these people? If so, say, I do. Amen. A shepherd is best known for their love for the sheep. So do you, Mark and Dave, love the people of this church whom God will entrust to your care? If so, say, I do. Like a good shepherd, will you guide and provide for this flock so they have all they need to grow in Christ Jesus, our good shepherd? If so, say, I will. Will you keep watch and guard against whatever can harm the flock or hinder the mission of this church? If so, say, I will. And finally, after careful and prayerful consideration, do you accept this responsibility with the peace of the Holy Spirit and the support of your family? If so, say, I do. Amen. Church, the relationship between shepherds and their sheep is really beautiful. And so there's a question for you in this. Will you, people of Bridgepoint, pray for these men and their families Will you encourage them and trust their leadership as they submit to the Lord and serve the church as shepherds of God's flock? If so, will you please say, I will. I will. Amen. Thank you. I've asked Mike to read from 1 Peter 5. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Jesus Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under you. Care watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Amen. 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 So I'm going to ask the four of you to slide over center stage. And church, I want you to understand that um, in the way of Jesus, a position of leadership is never a position of power. It's a position of selflessness and sacrifice. That the more you lead, the more you look like Jesus. And that means that you take on a burden of other people. And so this is a noble task that uh, these four accept today before the Lord and before their church. And um, I love them. And I'm so thankful that they have chosen to care well for you all. Uh, they need your support. They need your prayers. And so um, in Scripture, the laying on of hands was a way to set people apart for a special task. And so I'm going to invite you to stand up with us. And Mike and I are going to lay our hands on these four and pray for them, pray God's blessing and protection over their families. 
um, because we know that the place of the enemy attacks is often the leaders of God's people. Um, because if he can disrupt that, then he can disrupt much. And no matter how good a shepherd is, a scattered flock is vulnerable. And so we pray for unity. We pray for peace. We pray for protection. Would you join me in that? Father God, I thank you for these brothers and sisters of mine who have accepted this noble work. Uh, I know that they stand before you not feeling qualified to do this. Um, I know that they stand before you humble, recognizing that this is really not about them at all, but it's about the care of your flock, your people. So would you equip and empower us to lead well? Would you please use us, your shepherds, to guide and care for this flock whom you've entrusted to us? May we lead this flock well. I pray for Mark and Dave specifically that your spirit would empower them uh, to be men of wisdom, men of noble character, men of love and compassion, selflessness and sacrifice. God, would you lead this flock to the best days that you have for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church, thank you for being here today. Uh, if you have not yet met uh, these wonderful people, I invite you to come up after the service. If there's any way that our prayer team can pray with you, we will be here to receive you. Church, we love you. And we send you off in the blessing of Jesus. We can't wait to see you again. Have a great day.